Okay, here we go. Video number six this week. And all I have to do is one more. And I've made my quota for the week. But I have the opportunity to make four more. So I could get a total of three videos ahead of my quota. Which would be pretty darn tootin' awesome. Um, I pumped out a crap load of just random scenery videos and I'll probably pump out another crap load of them tonight with the rest of these videos that I'm throwing out there and then I will go ahead and um, just try my darndest to push through and be done with this month sooner rather than later um, I feel like I'm just about done with September already which is good I can then move to October I've got to get when October actually hits I'll need to spend a decent amount of time recording more nature scenery videos and it's disappointing that the videos I'm at this point just recording crap just to record crap and be done with it and it's unfortunate that it has to be that way but that is what I have gotten out of this project like I am capable of recording and posting a video every day for an entire year and there's more to that for myself than it is for anything else really and so we'll see what um, becomes of it I don't think that I've grown as a channel at all since having started this but I've at least grown as a creator and that's what a lot of people on YouTube they give that classic advice they're like you have to make sure you're constantly improving your product don't just make the same thing over and over and over again and that's essentially what I've done 365 times for uh, an entire year but I'm okay with that because although I did start out with thinking that this was going to be just a game of attrition and seeing how I could possibly um, succeed at this game has built me to a different place and it's turned me into a different creator and it's hard not to want something bigger, better, better from all of this but it's also difficult to not um, to not kind of already get something bigger, better, better out of it. And so the reality of things is the fact that um, I did the challenge that I set out to do. And I hopefully grew as a creative because of it. And if I didn't, then what was the point? If I didn't get anything out of it, then why did I do it to begin with? So, hopefully this can all come to fruition and be a happy little ribbon on the end of my 2024 bow. And I can say that I've released a video every day for an entire year. It's not necessarily a challenge that I can gloat about when I talk about writing books or building my own house those are things that are intrinsically fathomable people immediately can say oh i get what that is that makes sense if i tell someone i recorded a video a year for or a video a day for an entire year like the sheer thing of what i've said makes sense but it doesn't sink into someone just what that means that's at least 20 minutes of filming every day and then the dedicated time to editing and uploading it now granted here lately I've gotten away from the editing aspect of it and that's largely due in part that I haven't really 
made videos that are all that worth editing here recently. But this, the dedication and the sheer will to keep something like that going is, in my opinion at least, very impressive. So hopefully we can get to a point where we all feel well and good about everything that's happened and everything that's been done and then from there we can walk away a bigger, better, better people for it. Um, I think a lot about these advertising campaigns and how I really hope that they would be the future of my um, of my YouTube growth and it's kind of funny I keep getting pinged by Google saying that my identification needs to be verified before I can continue to promote stuff but they continue to delay the date over and over and over again and so like it was due the 20th of August and we're well past the 20th of August but because I have active advertisements running they're not going to do anything about it and then um, here we are due again and now they're saying it's due the 20th of September and I was like are they just going to keep postponing it until they give up and just accept the fact that they're happy to take my money or are they really going to stand by what they say at the end of the day like Google's not getting that much of a profit out of me by comparison, I'm just small fry, small apples, and if the algorithm never promotes my content, which it has no reason to do so, then I just keep pushing stuff out and dying on YouTube slowly. And so, in some regards, they've got me pigeonholed, but in other regards, I just really want to succeed. And so it's like, do I concede to their demands simply because I want to concede? Or do I concede to their demands because I feel it's the only way to succeed? Or do I concede to their demands? Or do I not concede to their demands? I'm sorry, that's, that's an option too. I could just say, you know what? No, I don't want to. And be perfectly fine with that. Um, it's a hard pill to swallow because I don't know what growing on the internet looks like without it. Um, people have done it. It's certainly doable. But with content as niche as Compression Man, it's not easy to do. It's not like I'm making a channel on YouTube that reviews sports games or a channel on YouTube that talks about celebrities. I'm not borrowing off of someone else's fame. I'm looking to create my own. And recently there was a um, there was a TV show or an animated show that was very um, kind of perverted it's a something hotel it's about a hotel I saw a bunch of cosplay people dressed at it at the comic-con I went to and I've seen a lot of different like the Casman hotel or the Hasman hotel something like that anyway um, that's the essential that's essentially what I hope to get out of Compression Man. I probably won't ever get to the sort of level that Has Been Hotel is what I'm going to call it has reached because they got like a multi-million dollar deal with Amazon to just be exclusive on Amazon. Any sort of exclusive deal for a significant chunk of change is, is a dream come true for me on any of my creative adventures, whether it be the animation or the books or something else entirely. But um, the reality of things are that if I'm not able to secure an audience, then I probably won't be able to get, um, I probably won't be able to get anywhere with a significant deal either. Audience is power. People are power. People have money to spend and one individual may not have a million dollars but between a hundred individuals they might each have a hundred thousand and that's how you get your um, 
it's a bad example, but that's how you get your money out of things is you win it in groups. And you're like, okay, well, I alone don't have the money I want, so I need to find those who are willing to share the money that they have with me to get me where I need to be. But, yeah, I really truly do think that audiences are a power. And um, somebody read a quote from a book that said that everybody in a certain um, time frame is going to have a gang at that point, at some point in time. And it is this gang that is going to ultimately um, propel them through the world. And it's like you have these ideas of the a thousand true fans and all these crazy, silly things. I think I just might go into the shoulder, actually, and just take the exit coming up here. Why is that person mad because I'm riding in the shoulder? So I'm just going to take this exit up here. Yes, I have to merge. I'm sorry, I did not realize I was being a complete asshole today. Yeah, I was kind of an asshole on that one. My bad, guys. I was just trying to get ahead in life. And instead, I just made a jerk of myself. Um, well, because what it is, is they put the road sign right at the exit. Like, I could just ride on the shoulder and then do the whole roadside thing and then take a different exit. Anyway, lesson learned. Don't do that again. <laughs> um, but they have traffic backed up, and I don't really know why. There's a bunch of signs that say road work ahead, and it still looks like traffic slowed, um, but I don't see... Oh, okay, I see the road work now. Um, yeah, next time I just need to be patient, and take this exit. I have this wonderful exit that I can use that gets me around most road work. They, it used to be the highway and then they um, built a new highway but whenever that highway backs up I just go ahead and take the old highway and usually by the time the old highway breaks I'm on the other side of the uh, road work. Like, I've already broken through to the other side of the road work right now. So, I was just anxious to get on this, um, but, 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 I should have, anyway, I got lucky. Um, I was anxious to get ahead of traffic and to do what I needed to do to get out, but, um, lessons are learned. We are always learning valuable lessons in life and that was one of them just be patient and take your exit there's no need to scoot over and be a jerk face and i scooted over and i was being a jerk face so you guys got to witness that firsthand um at any rate going back to individuals holding power and being being powerful and how everybody needs to have a gang and all of those lovely comparisons that people make, but it's, it is relevant. Um, the having an IP that is worth a significant anything really is a huge advantage in today's market. Um, people pay money to use IPs in other successful IPs. Like look at Fortnite. Fortnite built its fame more or less around just getting other IPs in its game. Same with um, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight only is relevant because it's got all these IPs in its game and it keeps growing and it keeps adding and it's honestly ridiculous, but it is unfortunately a proven strategy. And I think it's the new trend in gaming um, we had a PUBG trend, uh, what do they call it? It was like a 
Hunter, a Hunger Games survival battle royal. Battle royal. We had a big battle royal trend in the mid to late 2010s when PUBG came out and then Fortnite modified its entire game to be like PUBG and took over the entire world. And then I think Fortnite innovated on top of itself by incorporating all of these IPs into its world. And now you've got what was the previous hottest trend in the world, the Battle Royal game. On top of that, you've got the now current hottest trend in the world, which is just putting every IP you can possibly imagine into said game. And it's now a whole big conglomerate, but it's like everyone's doing it now. Um, like I said, Dead by Daylight's been doing it. They might have been doing it around the same time as Fortnite, or maybe a little bit before. But um, Call of Duty's doing it. Call of Duty's got random characters in their games that like have nothing to do with being in their games. They had Spawn in one of them, which like Al Al Simmons, who is Spawn's human form, would make sense in a Call of Duty game because he was a military mercenary. But to put Spawn in there is like overkill because Homeboy like is a demon. You can't just shoot and kill Spawn. And so it's like I'm embarrassed to even play as Spawn in this game because if I die, then I've just ruined his entire lore. And it's unfortunate because I'm sure they offered Todd McFarlane a huge payout to be able to do that. But as like a creator of content, I would like to respect my content enough to be like, nah, if I'm putting Spawn in here, he's going to be invincible and he's going to slaughter people. I was like, how's about you put Al Simmons in there and call it a day? And whatever happens, happens. And we wind up where we wind up. But at the end of the day, billion dollar Ivy's rule the world. And as long as we live in a world where that is the reality, then we have to adjust to that world and adjust to that reality and do our best to succeed in that world and in that reality. And I wish, I wish, I wish that I could um, do something incredible. Well, that's maybe a bit harsh. I've done incredible things. I wish that I could continue to build on my platform of incredible things. Like, the scope of things that I have done has progressively grown from buying a car to building my own house to succeeding creatively. Um, And that's just the entirety of the the entirety of the place that I live. I don't even know what all to say except for that. Um, But hopefully one of these days I'll turn this camera on and know that there's thousands of people on the other end dying to hear what I have to say. And before I get there, I have to appeal to the four people that I currently appeal to until word gets out that, like, hey, this guy makes videos that are actually worth watching and if I'm being completely honest with myself I don't necessarily agree that these videos are all that worth watching but it's a start it is an absolute start and something that we all need to do is to start somewhere to get somewhere and we have effectively started here and I'm working to get here and hopefully by all means I will have reached my end goal before too long and before too late and hopefully there's people who have been along for the ride hopefully I continue to have awesome creative ideas I really think that um, I uh, people say that creativity stops when you hit 30 and it hasn't happened to me yet and I feel like Obviously, nothing is universal. So to say that anything stops at a given age, like you could say typically, but I think more of what it is is your mind matures. Like as you age, you do mature. And I think most people's minds mature past creative pursuits by the time they're 30. They're probably all starting families and doing whatever else the world requires of them. But 
us, us happy few who still haven't made it try our darndest to continue to make it and hopefully do so somewhere in that age group. So thanks for listening to my nonsense, watching me be a jerk face for no reason. And I hope you guys have a great day.